Okay, I hear. Well, you are not recording it. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. All right. Sir, please, can you go over what you just said? The, clarif the clarification you made. Okay, so you let me restart everything because I'm now even recording. So what I said was that we are talking about action potential, okay? And with action potential, it has to do with, we have action potential and resting potential. So with resting potential, I said, that is the period we can say, oh, the cell is at rest. So when I say the cell, I'm talking about the neuron, which is the axon. The cell is at rest, nothing, no ions or whatsoever, they are moving in, in it. So, so in most situations, for us to test that, okay, the cell is at rest, we use a device known as oscilloscope. So when you test, it will give you the voltage of what? Of um, the, the voltage number of the cell. And we normally say that when the, when the voltage is around minus 70 millivolts, then it tells us that, oh, the cell is definitely in a resting potential stage. All right, so for it to be in a resting potential state, okay, it means the ions are distributed in some, in some ways. So I'm just trying to take you through how the ions are distributed. So first, the two horizontal lines you see, take it like they are the, they, they are the axons of, of a neuron. So we've cut an axon of a neuron and we are trying to find out the ions within the cell. So this area is, the, is within the cell or within the axon. So the inside cell, this is how it's like. So we sometimes, in Buzi, they sometimes call it intracellular cell. So when you say intracellular, intra, it means inside, so inside the cell. So inside the cell, this is how the ions are. A lot of ions, a lot of, we have a lot of potassium and other protein ions within the cell when the cell is at a, at a resting, resting potential state. That's one thing you should know. So always when the cell is in a resting potential stage, the intracellular cell has these ions, potassium and other proteins. They are a lot inside the cell. But when the cell Yet at the same time, when the cell is in a resting potential state, the outside cell, the outside area of the cell, this is the outside area, which is known as extracellular cell. So it means the outside area of the cell, it possesses a lot of sodium and chlorine. So Na plus and Cl minus, you can find them a lot outside the cell. So please, any questions so far? Yes, sir. Um, Godwin, your hand is up. Jim just alerted me. You have okay, sir. So when it cuts, please join again. Okay, sir. Please, um, a little bit confused with your explanation. I would like you to bring it to practical terms because these cells and then the, the terminologies you are using, I hope yes. they are related to human beings. So I'm wondering at what point can we say that a, a resting potential or yeah, something of that sort has occurred in a practical term? Because yeah, practical the terms, neurons, okay, okay, I, I totally yeah, get because, you. Because the neurons, yeah, they, they, trans, they, they transmit uh, or they communicate within the body. It means yeah. they go up and down. Yeah. Uh -huh. So at what point can we say that a resting potential has occurred? Okay. Okay, I totally, I totally get, get where you're coming from. So let's say, um, think like you're moving, okay? For you to have any sort of movement, it means that there's an action, an action potential taking place. Your cells are, what, are active, your neurons are active, they are moving, right? But in situations whereby maybe you lie still, nothing is moving, then it means there is an aspect within the area of your brain, which is not what active, your motor neuro, your motor, um, yes, a portion of your frontal lobe responsible for motor activities. It is 
not moving. So it means it is in a resting potential state. So when it is in a resting potential state, we are just trying to find out how the ions distribution are, how, how they are. You know, from the beginning, I said whatever um, tissue we form, it is based on a cell. And I told you we have two main types of cells. Either it is a neuron or a glial cell. So it means that if the brain is what? It's inactive, nothing is moving, then it means the neuron is also what? Inactive. It is at rest. So when it is at rest, we want to find out how the distribution of ions, when I say ions, I, O, N, S. We want to know the distribution of ions. So the thing is, when you, you check the brain area that is inactive, when you check a portion of it and you pick a new, the eighth neuron and you cut the neuron, inside the neuron, this is how the ion is like. You will find a lot of potassium and other proteins within that part of what? Of the neuron. Then outside the neuron, you will get a lot of sodium and chlorine outside the neuron. So basically that's what um, it's all about. So please, is it self-explanatory now? Um, a little bit. So in, in consequence, can you say that when you are resting at that point, there's likelihood of a potential, uh, a resting potential. A resting potential is taking place because some portions of your brain, they are inactive. Some portions of your brain, that is responsible for maybe helping you to, uh, to move. It's inactive. So it means the cells, some, the neurons are at, are at rest. So we want to find out if it is at, it is at rest, how is the ions do, ionic distribution like? And that is what we are doing. So it means when okay. that part of the brain is at rest, inside that, that part of the neuron, you will find a lot of potassium and protein ions inside. Then outside that part of the neuron, you'll find a lot of sodium and chlorine. So that's all. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm clear. Okay, so it means the moment it is at rest like that, and maybe by one or two reasons, you are lying down. So let me put it like, okay, you are lying down. You are not moving. So it means some part of your brain is at rest. Then all of a sudden you begin to what? Stand up and what? And walk. The moment you begin to do that, then it means the cell is moving from where? From a, a resting potential stage to an action potential stage. So when it happens like that, when a cell is about to move to a resting pot uh, to an action potential stage, the ions, the ionic distribution begins to what? Begins to change. So first, the cell is in the arresting potential. So we are saying there's a lot of um, potassium and what and proteins inside. Then it begins to move to an action potential state. So you could see that potassium, which is a lot inside the cell, begins. Some of them begins to move out of the cell. Then also sodium and chlorine which is a lot where sodium and chlorine is a lot where i want to find out whether you grasp what, I, what i'm doing when a cell is a yeah, outside outside, outside the cell. good so since sodium and chlorine they are a lot outside the cell right now we want the cell to move to an action potential so it means some portions of it begin to move into the cell i hope currently we are on the same page. Everything is well understood up to this point. Yes, yes, sir. yes, yes. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm moving on. So that's what happens when action potential takes place. It means 
some of these ions, which is inside, move out. Then some of the ions, which is out, outside, also move into the cell. So in all, for action potential to happen, two things are involved. Two main key things are involved. And they are diffusion. and electrostatic force. So I have less than three minutes. So in case it, it cuts, or it goes off, use the same link to join. So first, when a cell is at rest and the ionic distribution is like this, a lot of potassium and other ions are found within the cell, then a lot of sodium, and chlorine are found within, outside a cell. You could see that the moment you want it to move to an action potential, diffusion will happen. So let me ask the class, what is diffusion? So please, so in case you want to answer, you can just use the emoji to raise up your hand. Then I'll call you. What is diffusion? Oh, nobody wants to answer. So let me try. Okay, Rashida. Rashida, go ahead. Oh, you. you Kindly unmute yourself and speak. You are still on mute. I, I want to try. Okay. Diffusion happens when um, the, the, there's going to be an action potential. Yeah. When the um, sodium moves from extracellular to okay. intracellular, it changes. Okay. So what, what, what will make sodium move to extracellular to intracellular? You are perfectly right. But I want a general definition for diffusion. Esther Safon, your hand is up. Okay. Diffusion is the movement of anything from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. Good, good. So you are, you, are, you are right. So as Rashida Riley said also, you know sodium, there are a lot where? I said sodium, there are a lot out, at the outside cell, which is the extracellular. But 